Next up, at UFC St. Louis, we got Chase Hooper taking on Vaishlav Borshev. This is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, a grappler versus a striker matchup. We got Chase Hooper looking like a boy. He leans into that. He's very funny about it. Tons of hilarious pictures about him just not being the most physically imposing man on the UFC roster. But he is 13-3, and three and he is skilled. He's 3-2 and two in his last five. He's coming off back-to-back -back wins. He's taking on a prolific kickboxer, Vaislav Borshev. 7-3 and three overall, 2-2-1 two, two and one in his last five. He's coming off that draw with Nazim Sadikov in an absolute banger of a fight. I mentioned... Grappler versus striker. There's no questions about what this fight is going to be. Chase Hooper is a grappler, a nonstop grappler. He's going to look to get this fight to the ground. He's going to look to strangle you if he can, work in a submission if he can. Problem for him, though, is that his takedowns aren't that good. He's got Mackenzie Dern bad takedowns at 22%. So you can't necessarily rely on him to get a fight to the ground when you need to get a fight to the ground. He's taking on Vaishlav Borshev. Vaishlav Borshev, 7-3 in his MMA career, but he did have a professional kickboxing career before that. He's got a great jab. He's got solid power, fantastic kicks. Everyone is very well aware of how good he is on the feet, which is why they try to take him to the ground, but he's a dog. He stands back up. You're going to see he has been taken down 28 times in six UFC fights. You don't get taken down 28 times if you can't get up. This guy has a great get-up game, and he's very, very dangerous on the feet. He is coming off of that draw with Nazim Sadikov where he was dominating the striking, but then he got dropped. And then almost finished, he got out-wrestled. That fight was an absolute banger of a fight. If Chase Hooper had better takedowns, if Chase Hooper had his grappling skills, the skills that he just used to submit Jordan Levitt, and takedowns, Chase Hooper would be the pick without a shadow of a doubt. But I don't necessarily know that he can get this fight to the ground as much as he needs to, as quickly as he needs to. I think Vaishlav Borsev is just a much better fighter. He's got an insane get-up game. Even if Chase Hooper gets him to the ground, I can see Vaishlav getting up. Chase is very, very dangerous. Chase is going to be the most dangerous grappler, the best grappler that Vaishlav has fought so far, but not the best wrestler. And I do think that matters here. I am going Vaishlav Borsev here because of... Uh, the lack of takedown ability from Chasey Hoops. What do you think, Jakey boy? Yeah, this is uh, going to go really good or really bad for Chase probably because obviously he is nowhere in the stratosphere as far as the striking of Slava. And Slava is a guy that should, I mean, he should smoke Chase, right? I mean, every fight starts on the feet. He should be able to keep the distance, right? He should be able to knock him out. And I think there's definitely a world where he just smokes Chase from the opening bell, right? Lands that first shot. Chase kind of gets stung and panics a little bit, tries to, like, dive in, can't get the takedown, and then really just kind of gets smoked. But with that being said, I do believe that Chase, now coming into his grown man body, 155, <laughs> Right, This is a big dude, a strong kid, and this is a guy that you don't really need good takedowns, right? You just, in my mind, you just need to be Jay Super, get to that clinch position, and just be big, just be strong, and just kind of grab this guy and drag him to the ground. And if he gets dragged to the ground, if he gets dragged to the ground, that is Chase's world. I think they're, my biggest worry here, honestly, for a guy like Chase Hooper, is he's going to get the opportunity to get this fight to the ground, and he's going to turn into what I don't want him to do is do the leg lock thing, right? Because when you do the leg lock thing, it's easy to get out of those. And once you get out of a leg lock position, you're back to your feet, right? You can kick away, you're back to your feet. And then you have to find a way to get this fight back to the ground again. Once you get this fight to the fucking ground chase, keep control. Be that control guy. Be the guy that's going to be on top of him, that's going to be in mount, that's looking to get his back. Don't be that leg lock guy because you can't take away their, you can't lose you can't lose these opportunities once the fight gets to the ground. You have to stay there. In my mind, if I'm Chase, I just run across the cage and just fucking grab this guy from the opening bell and just see what fucking happens. Just Do run that Mauricio Ruffy bullshit. Do a little scissor sweep. Right? <laughs> yeah. Do a little scissor sweep. Yeah. Just run across the cage, grab this guy, drag him to the ground because that space, you're going to be in fucking trouble. There's no doubt about that. I think he finds a way to get to the ground. And if he gets to the ground, I think uh, not necessarily it's going to be. I know a lot of people are like, oh, just play Slava and then just play load up on Slava and then hedge it with the chase sub bet. 
I think there's a world where we've seen Chase mount people and TKO him. I think he can get those positions against Slava. And I think there's a world where Slava's a tough son of a bitch. He's a hard guy to submit. He's a hard guy up. to keep down. But even if he gets taken down, he is down. He is a hard guy to fucking submit. So there is a world where Chase comes in and just kind of out-wrestles this guy for three rounds as well to a decision. So I'd be careful with the load up on Slava and then hedge it with the Chase sub bet. Chase can win a, a, a different, a, a couple different ways. So I'm going Chase here. I think he does find a way to just kind of drag this guy to the ground, and uh, but it's definitely a dangerous pick. There's not about no doubt about that. Yeah, and I don't have money on Borshev. I don't have money on him because it's funny. I mean, it, it sounded like a joke. I laughed at it, but you were being serious, and it is a good point. Chase Hooper is turning into a man. He's if he was Jewish, he'd be having his bar mitzvah right now. He's right there. He's turning into a man. He's he's gonna have a man body here, and actually the pictures. That they've been, you know, the, the more recent pictures of him. He's not as unassuming as he used to be. The dude is six one and has a nice little six pack. Like he's not. He said he literally just said this, this dopey week. I'm, I'm no longer the young, just the young kid that's in the UFC. I'm a fighter now. He said I'm a fighter yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, and he's always been tough. Obviously, he got a couple of couple of tough fights went the wrong direction there. But I think the biggest point that you made and the biggest point to make here to counter my Vaishlov pick is Chase Hooper didn't even need a takedown. In his last fight, he submitted Jordan Levitt without a takedown. There was a scramble. He snatched it up. So he doesn't necessarily need good clean well, wrestling I mean, to get that done. Jordan brought that fight to the ground. I don't think Slava's going to be shooting takedowns on Chase. So. No, no I, I get it. I'm just saying. like He doesn't necessarily need offensive takedowns per se. And we watched Mackenzie Dern climb Tisha Torres' back against the cage as well. So either way, Jacob and I, you, wait, you ended up picking Chase? Oh, yeah. We're split on this one. I'll bet you on this one. I'll, I'll throw more money in bet you openly. You have no money. I will add account. money to bet openly. I will I will bet this one. I'm I, I'm not going to bet the sports books with this one, but I'll get the better odds and I'll bet the you The only this bet, one bet I have on this is on Slava. Well, if you want to unlock Jacob's bets, you can do so now at wewantpicks.com. Just click become a member. I don't have the correct graphic on the screen here for the DraftKings stuff, but Chase Hooper, $7,700. Vaishlav Borshev, 85. One of those gentlemen might end up being the best DraftKings value on this card. If Chase Hooper gets a submission and he's sub 8,000, that's fantastic. If Vaishlav just pieces him up on the feet and finishes him, $8,500 is going to look spectacular. I think it is a pick your side. Do you trust Chase at 77 in the DK? No. No. Well, if you want to see what the DraftKings optimizer says, we want picks.com. Click become a member. You can unlock that and everything else for only $10 a month. And we are getting some love in the comments here. Kyle O'Brien says 10 bucks a month. In case you forgot, the safety parlay wins at a 90% clip. It's not 90, it's almost 70, but a single yeah. bet hitting at almost 70% is spectacular. So thank you for that. Yeah, I think he was kind of making fun of you. I don't think so. I think he's being sincere. Well, I think he was making fun of you. Don't forget, guys. And by the way, blah, blah, blah. No, I think he was being sincere. And here's another one. Wheeze says, $10, guys. Best in the game. Just reminding you. And thank you for the love and support here because my neighbor only watches these breakdowns. He could give a fuck. He only watches these breakdowns. Oh, I thought that guy Kyle was clarifying if he was joking or not. He only watches these breakdowns for the fat jokes to me. Um, and you guys have been very kind these last couple of weeks, so no fat jokes to send them. He literally will text me after. Any good zingers? No. They're very supportive. They've been very supportive. So Everyone nice try, put neighbor. your fat jokes in the chat right no, now. No, no, no. They, they've turned a leaf. They've realized, oh, shit, this whole time Angela was the funny one. Oh, shit, he's not fat. I think was the big revelation. Oh, shit, he's 6'3", and he's not fat. So... There you go. And speaking of not fat, we will give you a fat $50. If your wallet's not fat. Yeah, there it is. I was trying to, I was like, how do I, uh-oh. If your wallet's not fat, we'll make it a little bit fatter. We want picks.com slash bets. Sign up with any one of our partners using our affiliate links and we'll send you $50 as a thank you. It's literally that simple. You use the link. You make a deposit. They pay us as a thank you. I slice off some of that money and I give it right back to you, we want picks.com. Click no, we want picks.com slash bets. Click the links, sign up using those links, and we'll send you $50 as a thank you. If we're gonna make money, then you will too. That's just how this is gonna work. And then also, here is the address to the P.O. box. If you want to send some mail, send it. We open up the mail on the vlogs. The vlogs are done for every single pay-per-view. This last week we got a 
Hammock from Twill Outdoors. You can check out the vlog. We, I hooked up the hammock and I got my fat ass in that hammock, 250 pounds swinging from that thing five feet above the ground. Phenomenal little hammock. But the point there is that's a small business out of New Zealand that watches the show. They sent the hammock. They wrote a nice letter. And what am I doing if I can't help? We don't have the biggest platform in the world, but if I can't help people, what are we doing with this platform? Here's the address. Send us some stuff. I, I am expecting some gag gifts, queso style, you're a fat loser type stuff. We did get some hot sauce that ruined me for about a week. But either way, here's the address. You want to send something, we will open all of it on the Fight Foods vlogs for every pay-per-view.